Dr. Parnier has been collecting evidence from individuals like Heather and also started some clinical research into near-death experiences in cardiac arrest patients. This research was designed to try to establish their cause. Until 1997, there was very little data that had been gathered from objective scientific studies. And one of the things that we wanted to do was to start to really shift the whole study of near-death experiences from theoretical debates into objective science. And therefore, we set up the first ever study uh, that was published in cardiac arrest patients. And we looked at things such as a lack of oxygen that had been proposed until that point, drugs that patients may have been given, and also their own personal psychological state and religious views before coming to hospital. In order to rule out anecdotal and subjective accounts, Dr. Parnier's research was extremely selective. He included only people who had suffered cardiac arrest and had been clinically dead. The term near death is a very wide term which is very difficult to define and therefore we decided to study a group of people who've objectively and scientifically reached the point of death. We know from clinical practice that the definition of clinical death is a person who has no heartbeat and no breathing and also whose brain stops functioning. And looking at the what happens to a patient during cardiac arrest is that by definition they have the first two criteria and that within a few seconds their brain also stops functioning. And therefore we have the closest model to study the dying process. Cardiac arrest patients were therefore the perfect group to study. Brain expert and neuropsychiatrist Dr. Peter Fennick teamed up with Dr. Parnier to endeavor to find out what happens to the brain during a near-death experience. When you have a cardiac arrest, if you monitor brain waves or the electrical activity of the brain, you find that within eight seconds, it's almost absent. And it's absent throughout the brain, so you don't have little pockets of activity. So to all intents and purposes, once the heart has stopped, the brain ceases to function. Now we know from our neuroscience that you cannot have experience without a functioning brain. So once the brain function has stopped, then all experience must stop. If it doesn't stop for any reason, then you, you've made a very strong statement, and that is that mind and brain are not the same. With their research into cardiac arrest patients, they are trying to define when the experience occurs. Could it be happening at the point consciousness is lost, or when we regain consciousness, or the unthinkable? that the near-death experience is happening when the brain is not functioning. It's very difficult for us to say exactly when it's occurring because any memory could be occurring in just an instant and it's impossible for us to nail it down to an exact moment during a cardiac arrest when it occurred. But what will help us to nail it down is where people describe out-of-body experiences, where they describe specific events that had been occurring during the cardiac arrest, which were verified by the medical and nursing staff. So, for example, a patient may describe certain details that were occurring in half an hour into a cardiac arrest resuscitation. And really, in order to be able to prove what's happening in these people and test it more objectively, we need to be able to examine those particular cases. Over the period of one year, doctors Parnier and Fennec interviewed all survivors of cardiac arrest at Southampton General Hospital. Of the 63 patients interviewed, only four had had near-death experiences at some point during the cardiac arrest. What was needed was a bigger study. <laughs> 